Welcome to episode 103 and a half. Today, I'm talking to the president and vice president, Nicholas and Jonas from Start Summit. And we talk about how to organize a startup event for 2,000 participants here in St. Gallen. And we talk about all kinds of networking and other advice you need. But most importantly, we talk about the live startup show that we are going to do mid-March. So stay tuned. Welcome everybody to episode 103 and a half of the Startup Show. Today is a very special day for me because we are recording with the guys from the Start Summit. Now, a big disclaimer, I myself a student at the University of St. Gallen, so I'm a little bit biased towards this organization because I think they're doing great stuff. And so just so you know that, but today I'm very excited to talk about what Start Summit has in store for us this year. And as usual on the Startup Show, my guests get about a minute and a half each to introduce themselves to my audience. So I would say, Nicholas, maybe take it away and give us a few minutes of introduction to my audience. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Cedric. And thanks again for having us uh, today here at the Startup Show. Yeah, maybe some words um, to myself. Uh, my name is Nicholas. I'm actually from, from Hanover, Germany. Came to St. Gallen around three years ago and uh, since then kind of got involved with, with startup things, technology through um, the initiative START. Mainly I was doing um, START Network in the last year. I'm not sure if you already heard about it before. We're actually composed of different student initiatives um, in different cities all across Europe. And those are each individually um, organizing events on entrepreneurship, on tech at their um, campuses. So this is what I did in the last year and then um, in summer I kind of took over if you want to call it yeah. um, and since then we're kind of trying to uh, trying to organize all the pipeline of um, all the pipeline of activities that we're doing mm -hmm. again for 2018 before I get to you Jonas I would like to get a little bit of an insight or what fascinates you about like this whole startup ecosystem uh, that you decide like <laughs> you devote so much time to, to this first of all I think it's 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 about the people because the people that I met and the people that I'm meeting, they have so much drive mm -hmm. and they have an idea on what their purpose in life is. They really know how they want to change society, how they want to change uh, all the challenges that we have in the 21st century. And that kind of yeah, makes them different to, to, to all the ones at the university who are just like going into corporate and, and, and following like the path which somebody, society or their parents kind of, kind of gave them. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm really interested in it. And that's why those people are fascinating me. And that's why I'm committing all my time into it, I think. Sure. Good. Yeah. So uh, let's get to you and sure. like get a little introduction to who you are. Yeah, I'm Jonas. Um, I'm actually also from the north of Germany, from Bremen. I came to St. Gallen about two years ago um, and I've been in Start now for, yeah, kind of one and a half years. Mm -hmm. So I started w once 2016, I was a supporter at Start yeah. Summit and then I decided I really want to, I love the, the whole conference, the whole atmosphere there. Um, I met so many amazing people there. So then I decided to like join the whole organization team um, and organize the conference. So then last year I did um, content management, which means that I was responsible for all the speaker acquisitions um, and all the concepts of all the formats such as, I don't know, speed, speed dating, workshops, background session. And then in summer I, I took over the lead for Start Summit. Um, so that's what I'm doing now um, to kind of organize um, the whole team of Start Summit and kind of coordinate everything there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, um, you know, Nicholas gave it away a little bit of, let's say, stereotype careers that like the high school students are doing. <laughs> um, you know, where do you see yourself? Is like startup an option for you or? Of course, definitely. Um, I mean, it's not about like founding something for me. It's like the mindset. We, I think we um, should not just promote saying like uh, founding something is um, the only thing you can be entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. You can also be entrepreneurial like working in a big company or working for not a startup or not founding your own. So this is what I want to keep. So I want to keep being entrepreneurial minded, yep. but it's not that I say I have to found something to, yep. to be entrepreneurial. I'd agree to that. And I think uh, another thing which is quite important is that people do not found just for the sake of founding. Yeah. So like I've, yeah. I've been in Berlin in 2016 and some are working there and I kind of got the feeling sometimes that, that many people are going there, living the startup lifestyle, founding companies only for the sake of founding. And I think that's not, that's not the, the essential, like the so essence of entrepreneurship. Make money? or change the world, have an impact? or If you can combine all of those, I think that's, <laughs> I mean, 
I think that's the best case. You see, like business models have to be profitable in a way, otherwise um, you can't sustain a business. Sure. But if there is an idea behind it, um, a certain purpose or business idea in, in a sense of, of a moral idea, I think that's uh, that's a great way to also commit your your employees, for mm -hmm. example. And and so I think it's really about changing or tackling at least challenges which we have in the 21st century. Yeah. What many people ask me, maybe just really quick. Um, is how, to, how do I find a good idea? Or I want to start a startup, I don't have a, an idea. I think if you try really too hard to find an idea, of course you can push it to find something that, how to start a startup. Um, but if you try too hard, um, then it's more or less the, the, for the sake of founding something. And then mm -hmm. it's yeah, really hard to find something. So I think it's a good idea also if, you, if someone ha doesn't have an idea or something to start, somewhere else in the, in the ecosystem and get inspiration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let, let's talk about the Start Summit. Sure. Uh, what's, what's in store for us this year? And uh, maybe a, a little rundown of last year. Maybe let's start with some speakers. Um, actually, we will announce someone. <laughs> um, so we are really excited that we will have Chris Kemp, who is the former CTO of NASA and has now founded his own rockets company who are actually planning to do their first launch in the end of March. So like yeah. around one of uh, two weeks after Start Summit. This is a big announcement for us. We are really excited to having in. Definitely. Apart from that, regarding speakers, we have some in mind, for example, the Europe lead for Amazon Alexa, then Monique Morrow, who's the former CTO of Cisco and has now founded the Humanized Internet. And then of course we have amazing founders, for example, Mike Neff, who's the founder of Doodle. Jürgen Schmidhuber is maybe an interesting case. With his research, he's laid the foundation for a lot of machine learning, artificial intelligence cases, such as Ziri, Cortana, yeah. whatever natural language processing mm -hmm. apps you might be using. Yeah, in general, the program is divided into four parts. So we are focusing on four technologies, which is um, first blockchain, then augmented and virtual reality. And then we have artificial intelligence and Internet of Things. And mm -hmm. we are really trying to get speakers or really high class speakers in every of those yeah. fields, like Jürgen Schmidhuber in um, artificial intelligence or Alicia Sin, who is the founder of um, Libelium, a smart city company. So um, and then we are this year also focusing on health tech. Mm -hmm. So that means we want to connect because we see Star uh, Switzerland as a really prime location for health tech. Yeah. And thus we want to connect health tech with those four technologies and also talk about okay, what's in there for the future of life or the yeah. future of health. And I think uh, what, what also might be interesting, we kind of want to give more presence to the region that we're coming from, yes. meaning the St. Gallen Bodensee uh, area. We're trying to do that by first of all incorporating also a panel on how to get started with a startup here in St. Gallen, and second of all, to, to incorporating our um, partners that you have here uh, locally and regionally more into the whole conference. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be like a space for Startfeld, for example, yeah. where we are sitting at right now and um, doing this interview, and the canton and the, and the city and all the stakeholders which are coming from, from St. Gallen and the sure. cantons around are going to be present. And I think that's a very important step because in the last year we were kind of promoting um, entrepreneurship and all the stakeholders were on board, but they were not kind of like centralized at a certain spot where you could see, okay, how can I get started here in St. Gallen? One of the announcements that we decided to do is that like for the very first time in my career, we'll do this kind of setting of the startup show um, on stage with a kind of a big audience, I guess. So which is very exciting. So if you're there, make sure to hit me up and we'll uh, make sure to get also your question answered live um, at the show there. Now, Let's talk a little bit about entrepreneurship because you do get a very nice and holistic approach of, let's say, what's going on in, let's say, the yeah. startup world. And I would say, you know, we, we covered kind of, let's say, Switzerland as mm -hmm. a total. We also covered um, a lot of, let's say, what's going on in Zurich. But maybe you can give us some deeper insights in what do you currently see here in St. Gallen in terms of, let's say, the startup ecosystem. And, you know, maybe even yeah. how can we take it to the next step? I think that St. Gallen has a really good basis because they have a lot of smart people here. They yeah. have a good university. They have quite a good, um, let's say, infrastructure. Of course, they have high competition with Zurich, which is not far away here. But I see St. Gallen in a really good way because the university is kind of driving it now. There are some key players, like you named it, Startfeld, um, who is organizing a really cool thing here in this space here. Um, and other players who really promote um, entrepreneurship. And I think that St. Gallen is on a good way to really 
like foster innovation here mm -hmm. in, in this area. Yeah, and I mean, there are there are some cool companies. Yeah. Um, take a look at Advertima, which is growing intensely. They'll be on the show next week. Very cool. <laughs> uh, then a Sportradar, for example, yeah. which is an international company right now. So there's actually coming quite a lot from St. Gallen, but I think it doesn't have the presence in national media, for example, yet. Yeah. And, yeah. and there is, that's kind of the point where, where I think the St. Gallen stakeholders have to tackle. They have to get more into promoting what they're actually doing. And by this also um, supporting entrepreneurship here in St. Gallen by getting people, by getting students um, into, into the matter of founding and not only going to yeah. consulting, banking. You know, I've been, I've been to many conferences, tech conferences, startup conferences around the world. And, you know, what you hear and sometimes, you know, you know, it sounds great that you have thousands of participants, but usually what, what I'm more curious to hear is what is the impact that you have on the people's lives? So is there anything, let's say, any stories that like came out from the last few years where you would say, you know, that kind of startup was able to raise money because they met people at the Star Summit? Um, I think a really cool case is Gamaya, who yep. won the big pitching competition 2016 yep. and have raised a funding of 3.2 million, I think, afterwards, right afterwards. And they will actually come to this year as well to really present what they have achieved since two years ago at Start Summit. Yeah, this is, I think, a really cool case. We had some acquisitions as well from um, Tuke, for example, who were quite active in the last two mm -hmm. years. You had, for example, Blinkers and Freeman, who met both of them actually in the background yeah. session, which is like a network event where we put the best 10 startups of one business area with, together with a corporate. So this there, they really created innovation. This is something that I really, really like to see. and. Um, Actually, I don't know if he got the idea of that, it's that summit, but the, the founder of IOTA was there, I think, 2017, so last year. And just a few months later, he, he founded or he started IOTA. Yeah. So this is, I think, a really cool case as well, because he was there as a student, actually. Those are cool cases. And we sometimes hear someone saying, hey, I got so much inspiration from this and this uh, that I wanted to start my own business. And this yeah. is really something that makes us really proud. Sure. Sometimes it's quite hard, though, to um, kind of track where yeah, the people are going after Start Summit. Sure. Um, but we're trying to, to get um, better traction of that, uh, trying to, to collect more data. I think one, one more interesting case uh, might be uh, the founder of N26, actually Valentin yeah. Stahl. Yeah. He was on my show. And he found one of his first investors. I think he met like Bert, uh, Jörg Reinbold from Axel mm -hmm. Springer Plug and Play at Start Summit, actually. So okay. the first um, thing was Series A, or was it Seed? I'm not sure, but some, at least one of his lead investors in the first round um, was one that he met at Start Summit. And, and I mean, has grown into such a huge company, which yeah, is active true. in not only Germany, but also in France and Italy right now and growing massively and really transforming the world of finance. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, a really cool impact that Start Summit is showing there. Sure. Um, you know, you, part of your activities, let's say, on the brand of Start, you mm -hmm. also have the Start Hackathon. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can elaborate a little bit, maybe what came out of it from last year. Specifically, what I'm interested in, obviously, like, were there some projects that are still going till now? Um, that's a good question. Uh, so the Hackathon in the last year happened right before Start Summit. Yeah. So we were able to take those projects from the Hackathon um, to the Start Summit and present them there. Mm -hmm. And one maybe very interesting case is actually um, a case from uh, Israel uh, students that came from uh, Technion in Haifa. Yeah. They built a device based on the Bosch XTK, which you could put on helmets, mm -hmm. and it detected if there was some kind of uh, emergency, like like some kind of accident, uh, through through using um, GPS, through using um, sound, and so on. And if in such an occasion, such a moment, the one who's wearing the helmet and and the device on it is not picking up his phone, it would directly call an ambulance. Okay. And that was a really, really cool case um, because they actually founded it afterwards. So, so it's a startup. Mm -hmm. I think it's still running and okay. they're quite successful with it. And, and this is essentially like, like, this is what we are really trying to achieve, like getting people to prototype on, on the hack, then showing their product or startup at the summit, and then even getting into, even sure. getting investments then at Start Summit for those cases and bringing them to life. And, and so I think this is actually one of the, coolest um, stories yeah. that we can tell. Sure. I looked at your website a little bit and mm. I mean, it, it looks very cool. It looks fascinating. Again, you know, startups is exactly what I'm interested in. Innovation, 
obviously also part of the tagline of, of my blog. Uh, but one of the things you'd state there is like the, the pipeline of entrepreneurial education, yeah. um, which sounds very fancy, but might need some more explanation if you can elaborate on that. <laughs> sure. okay. So, um, yes, yeah, Start Global is mostly known for Start Summit, um, yes. because, as it's the oldest and also the biggest um, event we are doing. But we are not doing only Start Summit. Um, Start Global has um, grown to a whole organization of different projects. So in January, we have four projects. First of all, that's like the pipeline. So first of all, there's Start Network, where we organize campus events around Europe. Um, we have seven chapters already in, in Europe, like in Berlin or Munich. Yeah. Um, and we organize their campus events to really promote entrepreneurship and get inspi inspiration, education. Um, then the second step on this pipeline is the, you, you named it the start hack. After you, you've been inspired, it's all about prototyping. So there they really work on real case challenges and then try to really get a product out of it. And then we have in the third step, the start incubator, where um, we try to support student teams in a three months program from having an idea to really founding a startup. Mm -hmm. And then of course there's Start Summer where we really connect startups to investors, startups with students for recruiting. Um, and it's not that we say we want to have everyone from the very first beginning to the very yeah. end, but we want to support entrepreneurs on their way of like founding a startup and getting investments. And this is why we call it the pipeline of entrepreneurial education, but because we want to support students from the very mm -hmm. first scratch that they have no idea about entrepreneurship to the first funding rounds, mm -hmm. right? Let's get more like, in, into the technicalities of, let's say, mm -hmm. organizing such an event. Uh, it's probably like, you know, part of it is the networking and, and the impact that you have, but also the other thing is definitely like the people that are going to speak there. So you mentioned a couple of people, but I would be more curious to hear also more on a practical level, you know, how can you, I mean, like I do it all the time, but maybe, you know, it's interesting to talk about how you can actually reach out to these people and get them to come all the way to St. Gallen. Now, <laughs> between you and me, St. Gallen is definitely a good place to to start like innovation and startups, yeah. but it's definitely not on the global sure. um, map of like startup ecosystems yet. Yet. <laughs> um, I think we have kind of the advantage that we have been founded already in 1996. So we have a lot of alumni, mm -hmm. right? We have a really, really strong network built up in the last few years. Yeah. So this is something I would also tell um, to everyone who watches this, that a network is a strong network is really an advantage that is key and that's really need to be used because um, you, you need to somehow get them an advantage as well of your organization. So um, we are not like just using um, guys for a network, but well, we have so many supporters for us and we have such a strong name already in, in Europe at least, which through those contacts and networks we can reach to really cool people. Mm -hmm. And um, then it's kind of, Every year it gets better and better and every year um, the people or the speakers are um, more and more known yep. in general. So and then it gets more and more ways, right? Sure. I mean like when you when you, you, you guys are the president and vice president, so you kind of have to be, let's say, the visionaries within the team. Also, um, I'm well aware that usually you do that, let's say, for one to two years. You mm -hmm. don't do that for too long. But let's say if you had to place the start summit in, let's say, five to ten years. And you say like, well, if I could choose now where I want that event to be, and I'm aware it's not all in yeah. your hands, um, what, what would be, let's say, the vision where you would say like, this is, this is Start Summit on a global level known for? I think Start Summit is really much about bringing um, the digital ecosystem together. And that for us, first of all, means founders. Second of all, it means investors, third of all it means corporates, and, and fourth of all it means um, it means corporates, innovative corporates, for example. And if I like take, take this idea of bringing the ecosystem together, I think it's very important that we get the best out of the founders, the best students, and the most innovative corporates to start Summit. So, so where I see it, I don't see it growing exponentially participant-wise, for example, yeah. but I see it growing even more quality-wise. Yeah, that was actually the aim for this year um, as well. So last year we already had 2,000 participants. So this year we won't have an exponential grow anymore, let's say, because we really want to focus on the quality, who's going to start summer and not how many people are going to start summer. Right. So as you mentioned, for the next year, 
probably will be on this track as well. Yeah. So, so we might call it maybe Start Summit 2027, 2018 could be like one of the biggest gatherings of the digital ecosystems of Europe mm -hmm. or maybe the world. But maybe yeah, the world. We don't want to exaggerate here. One of your friends, I think, asked a kind of an ironic question. I, I did like the question because I believe there was some meaning behind it, <laughs> um, which I'm interested in hearing your opinion because it's not always so easy also for me. I'm running all of this blog next mm -hmm. to my studies um, and obviously family life. This question actually came in through Facebook. His name is Rafael. You know him? Yeah, okay, yeah. good. And, and I'm reading the whole question. You only have to answer parts of it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> How do you manage to study, organize, start, and, and I didn't say that I'm quoting, <laughs> look so handsome at the same time? So I don't know what's his intention, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. On, on a more serious note, I I am interested really to hear how you juggling and handling all of all of these like kind of duties that you have because yeah. you know organizing an event for roughly let's say two thousand people again and handling the studies is not easy. And I would take it even a step further. Many people don't do it because they're worried they can't mm -hmm. handle it. Mm -hmm. So maybe you have like some insights on that. I would say if you really want to do it, then. Everything is possible. That's that's a really <laughs> yeah, a cheesy, cheesy, cheesy sentence, right? But Niklas, for example, had two hundred percent jobs, for example, in the in, in the summer, more or less, right? He, he was um, working for a crypto um, company and for Start as well, like in the same time, but just for the summer, right? And it's quite quite similar to studies. I mean, at the moment for us, studying is really not there at the moment. <laughs> secondary. <laughs> really secondary. secondary. Yeah. But yeah, for example, last year when I had um, another position within the team, um, I did a lot of credits and yeah, you have to organize yourself. You have to see, okay, how much, how much time can, do I have to, um, do I have to spend for this project, for, yeah. for example, for studying? And how much time can I give into the other project? And how much free time, for example, do I want to have? Sure. And those three components then make the, the outcome, right, and yeah. um, in every sector. Yeah, and it's really it's really important to set priorities. So so the moment I, I said okay, I'm gonna do start as intensely as as we do it, uh, I just said okay, I'm not gonna care too much about my grades anymore. For example, <laughs> yes, um, because it gives you another way of going into the future afterwards. For example, sure. so I think setting priorities is is very important. Proper time management is very important. But in some areas, you definitely also have to sacrifice. Very good. Okay, so Rafael, I really hope that you got your questions answered. Um, about the handsomeness, you have to ask them directly. <laughs> um, but um, if you or anybody out there wants to ask questions in future episodes, make sure to subscribe to either YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Or you can also join my WhatsApp group where you can ask uh, your questions. Let's get into the quick fire Q and A today. Um, I prepared five questions, and I would like to do a little bit different than usually. So we go first to one person, mm -hmm. and uh, the other person has to kind of tune out, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and then we'll do the second one. So I would say um, we start with Jonas. Is this good? Okay, good, good. Post studies, corporate or startup, and why? Don't say <laughs> the wrong answer. <laughs> I would say startup. Um, because the mindset and the agility of this whole thing is something I really appreciate. Also, like in, in start, it's, it's kind of we are also kind of a startup at the moment. How we are structured, etc. Yeah. So yeah, definitely startup. <laughs> Good. Um, which is the most disruptive industry you see, and why? Health tech. Because there's so much going on, it's um, incredible. Last year, for example, we had a speaker, Robert de Grey, who's claiming that the, the first person getting more than 1,000 years is already born. Really? That's a hard, that's a hard, that's um, a hard sentence, but I think this is something where we have a lot of disruption coming up in mm -hmm. the next years. I mean, there's also some other industries, but I think health tech is at the moment really interesting. Right. Good. So, which is your favorite startup, and why? I like. Echobox because it's so interesting. It's an artificial journalist, and because it's so controversial, right? Because what they do is they have the information and then they write an, um, an article by, on their own. They will also be present at um, Start Summit actually as a speaker and will tell their story. And I find this so interesting. Like what's what's possible there? That you even yeah. can write an article where you think that it's not 
it's like about creativeness. And that shows connection between really creativeness, what you think is human, and a robot or an artificial um, machine, as you want to call it like this. So this is something I'm really looking forward to, to meet him. And this is something that kind of scares me yes. because it's like the creativeness of artificial creativeness, which is, in my opinion, something that's, okay, how, how, how the hell can this be? Um, but something that's really, I'm really curious about as well. Sure. Who do you admire in the startup world? And you cannot mention Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> I think... There are a lot of people who founded a lot of stuff. For example, Felix Haas, who's, who's also been in the um, startup, on the, in the Start Network as well, who is founding so many other companies, or Richard Branson, for example, as you want to have it a bit more um, glamorous, who's just founding something, selling it, and founding the next thing, like right away. And this is so, I mean, like, how the hell can you do this? <laughs> how can you just have, if you, have grown up something and just like uh, say, okay, I want to do something else, go away with it, sell yes. it and do something else. And this is something I really admire. And that takes a lot of risk and a lot of heavy mindset. Yeah. Yes. So for the last one for you, um, <laughs> and for now you're not allowed to answer is the Start Summit. Uh, what's missing in the Swiss uh, startup ecosystem? I think the people are, not, are still not minded, as minded as in the United States, for example, that they really take the risk. I really don't see at the moment as much as, for example, in the United States, that the people in the Swiss ecosystem need to risk something. They need yeah. to um, really start their own thing, not t too much think about the negative points, um, but more about, okay, what is possible if I start something yeah. and what is the life, right? I mean, it's a, more or less a lifestyle as well. And this is something I think the Swiss ecosystem is getting better, um, but still needs to improve. Yeah. Good. Well done on this one. So now it's Nicholas' turn to uh, answer the question. So, post studies, corporate or startup? Why? Um, startup because I don't like politics and corporate. <laughs> oh well, you have politics also in startups. So maybe you get the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, politics is uh, belongs to life in a way, yeah. but but corporates seem or are such political structures. Um, that, that I don't really like to be in big companies, so I could imagine a small corporate, yeah. but don't want to go into like a huge corporate. Okay, fair enough. Which is the most disruptive industry you see? Uh, that's a, um, a good one. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I, I have to say blockchain because I was involved in uh, various blockchain projects over the last year. And, and you used to work for Crypto Finance Okay, who was a that's part right. of my show. That's right. I really believe that is one of the most um, disruptive themes that are uh, out there right now yep. because it completely takes away all the intermediaries and it's not only it's not only transforming one certain industry but it's able to transform any industry and and yeah. that's why i think um, blockchain technology is really one of the big things for the next 5 to 10 years it's not at the, right now it's still not applicable in every field Yeah. But I think we're going to get there. Yeah. And, and this is why I think blockchain, also, for example, blockchain connected to health tech. Yes. They're very interesting cases, which could really have an impact in the next um, five to 10, 20 years. Absolutely. So which is your favorite startup? I'd actually take a health care uh, blockchain case. Um, it's called EFIO. It's uh, kind of decentralized, organized. So people are working from several um, spots, countries for it. And what are they, what they are building is more or less like a new operating system of healthcare. Yeah. Uh, through taking away all the intermediaries to giving patients directly access to doctors, bringing people from any place uh, to, to other places where they can take surgery, for example, on, yeah. on anything. I think those are cool cases because they have an impact because they make um, healthcare cheaper. And I mean, the whole health system in most of the industrialized countries in the world might explode yeah. in the next 20 to 30 years. So I think it's really essential that we find solutions for that. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the companies that is trying to find a solution at least. So who do you admire in the startup world and why? Uh, tough question. I actually had time to think about it, but um, <laughs> I'm not 100% um, sure. I'd say Bill Gates. I mean, he's very popular and many people probably call Bill Gates, but I really think that uh, what he's doing and um, like the knowledge that he shares um, through his uh, social media channels, whatever it is, is really influencing a lot of people. And uh, that makes him a very inspiring character, in my opinion. 
Yeah, and what he does with his wealth. Yeah, I mean, like he's not Definitely. just like resting on it and not Definitely. just giving it to his kid. Um, last question for you: What's missing in the Swiss startup ecosystem? Jonas, you spoke about the mindset. I think the mindset is a very important one. But second of all, it's also about um, educating people, and I think. Uh, what we still miss is going as early as possible into teaching um, entrepreneurship. And, and that goes, I think it has to start earlier than at university, for example. In all those universities, be it uh, ETH in Zurich, be it, be it Haske here in St. Gallen, they have um, centers for entrepreneurship. But in schools, you don't really see yeah. too much. And I think really cool would be if, if founders would go more into the schools and, and tell the students, okay, what did I do? How did I get started? And how are you able to found, found a company when you're like 16 years old or something? And, mm -hmm. and those are the cases which might get exponentially big afterwards. So I really think, let's call it early stage education. <laughs> early I think that's stage, something like we're just still lacking. Okay, very good. So we get um, into the last part of the expert advice. Expert advice is a segment where you can leave your legacy for the next generation, uh, where you can get uh, about 30 seconds to give some kind of insights where you'd say like, this is something I want to give over uh, that you have experience with or that you feel like you have superior knowledge than everybody else out there. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe I start with um, how to get the most out of such a startup conference. Yes. What do you want to get from a startup conference? It's more or less context and also really good um, maybe ideas or inspirements. Mm -hmm. So it is, of course, crucial to, to, or of course, it's the most interesting thing to sit in a, in a speech and get inspired and see cool people, or crazy people um, talking about cool stuff. But I think even more important is that you take your time and have some free time and try really, really try to get to know people. Because at least at a startup conference, everyone wants to do that. Everyone wants, is there because they want to get to know people. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really easy. That makes it so easy to just talk to them. I mean, um, everyone's happy because everyone's kind of a bit shy, right? So yeah. everyone likes it when you talk to them because they want to get to know you as well. Yeah. They want to get to know as many people as possible. So. This is one advice, use all the formats, for example, um, if you want to go get a job, apply for, I don't know, something like speed dating or yes. some networking events. Um, use all the possible people that are, yeah. all the possibilities that are sure. there. Yeah. Very good, networking is definitely very important. Yes, next okay. up. Um, yeah, I wouldn't consider myself an expert uh, <laughs> in anything because I'm kind of like interested in so many things, but uh, not really an expert on, on, on any of these, but I would say, and what I did like in my life was a lot of like going through the kind of unofficial, not unofficial channels, but kind of not, not taking like the, the normal way that yeah. kind of my, my parents wanted me to go, for example. <laughs> yes. Always kind of try to do like, like my own stuff and my own decisions and, and then communicate it like if it comes like to, to I don't know, like parenthood or something, communicate it then some, sometimes afterwards. And that, that kind of led to, to, I think, where we are right now. I'd say like taking your own decisions is very important. Don't let get yourself influenced too much by by society and by what people what people say and what people tell you, and just do your thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important. I have a problem now. Now people, like, students, gonna go home. They said like they heard on the startup show, rebel <laughs> against your parents. <laughs> I'm kidding. So thank you very much, guys, for being on the show. I'm very sure. excited for our live live startup show at the Start Summit in mid March. And for all the speakers, and get very, I'm get very excited to get all of these exposure to all of these startups here that are coming here to St. Gallen. So thank you very much for being on sure. the show. Thank you very much, everybody who tuned in uh, this week for this special episode 103 and a half. <laughs> and now stay tuned for the preview for next week. Have a great day. Hello, my name is Daniel. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Maving. Please don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss my video on Monday. 